The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Joey Brown and Ann Southern in G.I. Circuit. Before we begin our play, here's a tip of special interest to those who work with their hands. To protect your hands from grime and paint, before you start work, rub on DuPont Protect Hand Protective Cream. Protect is a greaseless cream which dries quickly and acts as an invisible glove. After work, by washing your hands in running water, the protective film is dissolved and the grime is quickly carried away, leaving your hands free from stains. Try Protect. P-R-O-T-E-K. The hand protective cream made by DuPont. Probably no one can speak with more authority of the part played by American show people in the war than Joe E. Brown. One of America's best beloved comedians in vaudeville, radio, and films, he has already made three trips overseas bringing solace and cheer to men who daily face death in remote battlefronts. Mr. Brown's third trip from which he returned a few weeks ago took him over 50,000 miles from Casablanca to Chongqing. And now our radio play called G.I. Circuit which was written especially for the DuPont Cavalcade by Paul Peters. DuPont presents G.I. Circuit with Ann Southern as Lily Valentine and Joey Brown as the narrator on the Cavalcade of America. You've all read and heard how Bob Hope Carol Landis and Frederick March, not to mention yours truly and many others, have gone out to the faraway battle zones <clears throat> to entertain our soldiers. But few of you have ever heard of the little people, the rank and file entertainers, who've left the bright lights of Broadway and Terre Haute to put their shows on in the dripping heat of the jungle or in the blizzards of Alaska, who give five and six performances a day dressed in GI uniforms, living on army rations, crouching in slit trenches under the enemy bombs. These are the people I want to tell you about. And I want to tell you particularly about one. Her name is Lily Valentine. She plays the accordion. You know. She also makes with the feet. Yes, that's her. Lily Valentine. Accordion player and tap dancer. A girl I helped get a spot in a nightclub. And then all of a sudden, she disappeared. About a month later, I got a letter with an Army post office address. Kind of a battered letter. As if it had come a long way. When I opened it, it said... Dear Joe, two cents you never expected to find me in a place called... That word was censored. Uh, but Joe, you know this joint. You've been here. A million miles from nowhere. And when it isn't raining, it's 135 in the shade. <laughs> You'd die laughing if you could see me sloshing around in a G.I. uniform with a pair of G.I. shoes to keep the kangaroos from sideswiping my shins. <laughs> Every morning when I get up, I have to wipe the mildew off of Stakowski. Stakowski, by the way, is the name she calls her accordion. <laughs> but what you want to know is how I got here. Well, Joe, it all came from listening to you. One day the telephone rang. Hello? Miss Valentine? Yes? Yeah? This is Mr. Wolfson of the USO Camp Shows. How'd you like to make an overseas tour to entertain the soldiers? You mean London? Uh, oh, I'd love... I'm afraid uh, not London, Miss Valentine. Oh, I bet it's Alaska. No, not Alaska either. Joey Brown mentioned your name and thinks you're just what the boys out in the tropics will want. The tropics? Well, that means... Uh, we uh, can't tell you where, Miss Valentine. And to be perfectly frank, it will mean tough traveling and rough living. But from what I've heard of you from Mr. Brown... Oh, sure, I'd love it. When do I start? <laughs> Why don't you come over and talk to me about it? Uh, how's 11 a.m. tomorrow? <laughs> And that's how Lily and her accordion, Stokowski, got to a place called... <laughs> censored. Where it's either raining or it's 135 in the shade, and where you wear G.I. boots to keep the kangaroos from sideswiping your shins. Oh, yes, I forgot. There was a P.S. Joe, honey, will you do me a favor? Remember Virginia Belenka? She used to sing with me when we were the Valentine sisters. Catch her act for me sometime, will you, Angel, and dish me the dirt. She's teamed up with Mickey Del Rio. To think I used to like him once. But even then I had more sense than to think he could play the accordion. I did catch Virginia's act, and I wrote Lily what I knew she wanted to hear about it. But long before she could have gotten my news, I had another letter from her. Joey, dear, 
I'm right smack out in the middle of the jungle. You know how it looks. And you'd die laughing if you'd seen us crossing from Milner Bay to Woggy Woggy in the amphibian. That's one laugh at Lily's expense I'm afraid I can't enjoy. Because when I made that crossing practically lashed down in that so-called boat, that was where I learned that even an entertainer in uniform is just like anyone else in uniform. <laughs> Brother, you're expendable. Well, getting back to Lily, she had another lesson to learn when she reached camp. That night, Lily gave her first jungle performance. But even for a seasoned trooper, that first night on the coconut tree circuit must have been an experience. <laughs> I can imagine. Sammy Walsh, the MC, was doing his... Yes, <laughs> to that last lap we made in an army jeep. Boys, I want to tell you that jeep is a real secret weapon. <laughs> yes, sir, it has all the latest gadgets, including a Superman special by way of speedometer. When you go over 20 miles, that speedometer blinks on a white light. When you go over 30, it blinks a red light. And when you go over 32, it plays Don't Give Up. The ship? <laughs> hey, Sammy, bring on the girl. Uh, soldier? All right, soldier, that's just what I was thinking. So here's one of them, Lily Valentine, the One Woman Orchestra. <laughs> Hey, Lily, you better hold it. It's starting to rain. Hey, anybody got a raincoat, Mr. Kowski? <laughs> you know, fellas, when we started tonight, I took a look at all you handsome men crowded out there, and I thought, gee, it's a sellout. Now I'm thinking it's a washout. <laughs> Maybe we better pass out the rain check. Oh. Well, you don't want to get soaked, do you? Who cares for a little drift? Keep playing, babe. Bar, bar. Well, if you can stand. the rain stopped, just as suddenly as it began, and after Lily had changed her dress and fixed her dripping hair, she danced with the boys. <laughs> That's one experience that I didn't have. Well, as usual in Lily's letters, there was always that... P.S. Joe, honey, were you ever able to catch up with Ginny Belenka? Is she still singing with Nicky Del Rio? How can she stand that guy? <gasps> oh, yes, Joe, P.P.S. Give her my APO and tell her to make with the words, will you, honey? Would she go crazy to have an audience like this? They kept coming regular now, those little girl-being-brave letters from Lily. Almost one a week. Lily had gone to <coughs> censored by jeep, and then to censored by truck, and then across censored day to censored by censored. <laughs> then came news that bothered me. The lady accordion player and tap dancer ain't feeling so hot, Joey. I wake up in the morning cold all over and me with that iron valentine constitution. But this is show business, honey. Besides, you don't have the heart to disappoint these kids. They're so wonderful, Joe. Sometimes in the middle of the show, I feel like I want to jump off the stage and hug them. Every last one of them. Now, take this morning show, The Breakfast Review, we call it. At the hospital in... Censored, Lily. Censored. We each took a ward, and just after I'd given them, given them the works with as time goes by. Excuse me, Miss Valentine, but there's a boy in this other room would like to see you. A boy? Yes. He's very sick. Do you mind, Miss Valentine? <laughs> Don't stay more than a minute. Right over here, Miss Valentine. Hi there, soldier. How's everything? I, I heard you playing out there. Awful, wasn't it? It's awful pretty. <laughs> See, will you do me a favor? I'll bet I know what it is. Quit playing the squeeze box and let you get some shut-eye, huh? No, no, certainly not. But when you get back, will you call up my mother? Oh, of course I will. Chicago. Mm hmm Mrs. Ella Classen. Mm hmm. 1730 Cottage Grove Avenue. Mm hmm. Can you remember that? Sure, I'm writing it down now. Well, just tell her. Tell her you saw me. I think you'd better go now, Miss Valentine. Oh, please. Play the Jersey Bounce for me. Not now, Walter. She'll come back later. 
You let me know when he's ready, nurse. I'll stick around in the ward. I'll let you know, Miss Valentine. Here she is. Say, yeah. Miss, play some more for us. Yeah, yeah. how about Ricky Dicky Parley Boo? Yeah. Oh, the second lieutenant carries a pack. Parley Boo. The second lieutenant carries a pack. Parley Boo. The second lieutenant carries a pack. Well, Lily finished playing for the boys in the ward. Then she went back and found that nurse so she could make good her promise, play for Walter. That's one promise that Lily didn't keep. Walter was dead. Her next letter came two weeks later. Bad news. I knew it the minute I saw the handwriting. Shaky as if it had taken all of Lily's strength to write it. Dear Joey, you'd die laughing if you could see me now. I'm in the hospital, honey, flat in my back. Me with a temperature of 102 and even Stokowski's wheezing. I said to the doctor, now you just quit poking and thumping. I'm all right, I tell you. I got a show to play tonight. But he just looked at me with a fishy eye and said, Miss Valentine, you're going to bed. Oh, now, Doctor, be yourself. I can't leave my unit. Who's going to play for Evelyn? Young lady, you haven't been wearing your G.I. uniform and boots, have you? Well, gee, Doc, they want to see a girl. The way they used to remember them back home. Not a fugitive from a... Nurse, put Miss Valentine to bed. And so, Lily went to bed. For three weeks she stayed there. Then late one morning, a nurse mysteriously propped her up on her pillows and did what she could to arrange Lily's hair. A moment or two later, the door to the room opened and a bunch of the boys walked in, bearing a cake, all gooey with frosting and topped with one tiny little can. What's that? Well, it's a cake, Miss Valentine. Yes, ma'am, we baked it. For me? <laughs> Who do you think? All right, Frank, light it. Oh, what beautiful pink and white frosting. Oh, you silly lugs. But what's the candle for? You ready, guys? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Miss Valentine. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> birthday, but I... Yes, Sammy Walsh, the master of ceremonies, told us it's your birthday. It is your birthday, isn't it? Why, yes, of course it is. I plumb forgot. I could have killed that fool Sammy Walsh for playing that joke. But the idea of those kids getting up at the crack of dawn to bake a cake for me. Joe, so help me. I was so touched. I just broke down and cried. The nurse told me not to, but after they left, I nibbled at it. Jeepers, it was good. I even liked the taste of the candle. Honey, not even wild horses can keep me from doing my act tomorrow night. I'll die before I ever disappoint these kids again. You are listening to Joey Brown as the narrator and Ann Southern as Lily Valentine in G.I. Circuit on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Lily Valentine is one of that numerous and anonymous band of show folk now serving in this war through the USO. Lily, a member of a troop bringing song, fast patter, and nifty steps to the encampments of the South Pacific, reports her days and doings in letters to Joey Brown. As our DuPont cavalcade play continues, Joey Brown is reading about Wash Machine Charlie, a lone Japanese raider, in another exciting letter from Lily, played by Ann Southern. As Lily says... You'd die laughing if we could hear her letter about Wash Machine Charlie. <laughs> I had some experiences in Guadalcanal with Wash Machine Charlie myself. But let Lily tell about him. Dear Joe, the boys out here are so hungry for entertainment, they die laughing at your jokes even before you tell them. Sometimes it's pretty gruesome, too. Because all the time you're performing, there's a line of soldiers in the rear facing the other way. Well, as the sergeant explained it to me... Oh, them? Well, they're guards, miss. They're there to keep the Japs from jumping out of the bush and cutting our throats. Out of the bush? <laughs> you mean they're that close? <laughs> Lady, you're playing to an audience that's like an iceberg. The biggest part is out of sight. 
Yeah, I played to that audience. That boy was right. Even though the Japanese are so close, you can smell them, they managed to keep out of sight. Well, according to Lily's letter, Walsh was just finishing his introduction. And so here they are, boys. Miss Evelyn Priestley and the girl who'd like to squeeze you, but squeezes her accordion instead, <laughs> Lily Valentine. <laughs> Don't please my folks. Hold it. Unidentified plane. Sergeant, is that a jail? You bet it is. Hey, that's Watch Machine Charlie. Oh. Hey, Watch Machine Charlie. Red alert. Red alert. Good twitches, everybody. Right for those twitches. All right, lights out. Get those lights out. Hey, wait a minute. What are we supposed to do? There's a slit trench behind the stage. Evelyn. Evelyn, where are you? Sammy, we'll ride. Don't stand there yelling, you fool. Run. Go on. Hey, for the love of Pete, what do you mean diving in on top of me? Where's your own trench? Well, uh, nobody gave me one. Jeepers. A girl. Hey, who are you? Where'd you come from? I'm with the USO Camp Show. Oh, yeah. Which one, the accordion player or the singer? Accordion. Oh, I heard about you. Well, didn't you see the show? Well, I was on duty, but um, I hear you're cute. Do you? Well, just now I'm scared. Don't let that worry. Everybody is. Do you mind if I hang on to you a bit? Are you kidding? Well, if it's all right with you, take that spiked heel out of my head. What's that? Mom? Anti-aircraft. I don't like it. Just hang on. Tighter. It'll get worse when Wash Machine Charlie lets go. Who's Wash Machine Charlie? The Jap flyer. Oh. You ever hear his motor? Yum, 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 like a wash machine. That's why they call him Wash Machine Charlie. Oh. He takes a trot over here almost every night and lets fly with a few choice daisy cutters. Usually about 2 a.m. Just when you're settling down to a good, even snore. It's early tonight. What's a daisy cutter? And a personnel bomb. It's mean stuff. Blows down the grass in a hundred foot radius. Here it comes. Scared? Don't ask. Huh? Hold tight. Oh. Oh. Get used to it. Feel better now? No. Uh, guess Charlie's done his washing for tonight. Gosh, I'm shaking all over. Sure, everybody is. You too. I feel my hand. What's your name? Higby. Uh, ben Higby. You're a lieutenant, aren't you? How'd you know? Well, when I was, uh... Holding, I felt the bars. <laughs> You're a funny kid. Yep, I'm just thinking. What? You and I are going to get acquainted. What are we doing now? Oh, honey, this is just the appetizer. And then he kissed me. Yes, he kissed me right then and there, helpless as I was. Well, Joey, you'd die laughing if you knew the way I reacted. I shook all over, just like when Wash Machine Charlie was dropping bombs. Only I wasn't scared. And, of course, no letter from Lily was complete without that P.S. Joe, you're a honey for writing me. You know, out here, morale is spelled M-A-I-L. But can you picture that Nicky trying to crab Ginny's ass? But Pete say tell her to ditch him. So now they're out of work, huh? Gee, that's a shame. Well, Joe, then... More jungles, more camps, more jeeps, more amphibians. And now and then, don't ask me how, Lily managed to see Lieutenant Higby. Either he turned up at, uh, Port Censored to catch her show, or she found a way to get to Censored Atoll to catch an hour with him. I gather they got... Well, acquainted. And then one day at a port of embarkation. Watch uh, out! <laughs> okay, guys, grab your equipment off that pile there. Get up that gangplank and get on board now. Come on. Okay, let's go. Gosh, Lily, it's a little rugged. Will you stop wasting sympathy on me and look for him? Ben! Oh, Ben! Sammy, if Ben gets on that transport... 
world without my seeing him. Hey, Lily, look, here he comes. Hey, Lieutenant, well, over here. Here she is. Gee, Lily. Gee, I, I never thought you'd get up at this hour and come down to see me off. Although I, I was hoping. Oh, Ben. Ben. Hey, come on. You're a big girl now. So, uh, how about a tune to cheer up all the boys, huh? Well, I... Okay, Lieutenant, I guess I can take an order. Sammy, hand me that accordion. Here you are, honey. Thanks, Sammy. Now, Lieutenant, what'll it be? Oh, anything. Just strut your stuff, honey, the way you always do. And uh, don't look at me. Watch the kids on board. Sammy, keep her playing. Don't let her see me getting on board. Right, Ben. Luck, fella. Sammy. Sammy, he's... Where's Ben, Sammy? He's gone. There he is, baby. He's up there at the rail. Look, he's waving at you. Lily, Lily, honey, come on. Keep playing. Oh, honey. Honey, no. Hey, Lily. I'm about to tell you to play something. Play something? Play something. Okay. Okay, Lieutenant. I guess I can still take an order. was tough, <laughs> kinda, even though Lily was a real trooper at heart. But even for someone in show business, isn't that an awful way to have to leave your husband of just one hour? <laughs> oh, yes, I almost forgot. That letter ended with the usual... P.S. So she finally up and left him. Hooray for Ginny. I knew she'd come to her senses sometime. Tell her I'll look her up the minute I arrive. I'm coming back out here, Joey, and she's coming with me. The Valentine sisters, vaudeville and nightclub stars in a medley of new and old-time favorites. Say, will these soldiers eat that number up? Joey, we're just going to wow them. And you know, I believe Lily will. Thank you, Joey Brown and Ann Southern. Now, before Mr. Brown returns to the microphone with a personal message, here's Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont with this week's story of chemistry at work. The Freon refrigerants, which cool your refrigerator quietly and safely, are handling a surprising number of war jobs. Not just protecting military food supplies, although they do that too. I mean war jobs you'd never expect a refrigerant to do. For example, Freon is used by the Army and Navy in the war on malaria mosquitoes. When Freon is mixed with an insecticide, such as pyrethrum, it serves as the propellant. That is, it throws the insect-killing chemical into the air. Freon refrigerants are also used in the air conditioning systems of submarines. They chill strato chambers to 70 degrees below zero so that scientists can study the conditions flyers will meet at stratosphere heights. They cool mammoth wind tunnels. In industry, they find many, many uses shrink-fitting metal parts, stabilizing gauge blocks, speeding the heat treatment of steels and alloys. But these safe Freon refrigerants will return to their peacetime tasks after the war. And here's some news for you. The refrigerants used in almost all late-model home refrigerators are the Freon family. Now, another Freon refrigerant has been developed by Kinetic Chemical Incorporated, which is jointly owned by the DuPont Company and General Motors. This is Freon 22, like all Freon refrigerants, Freon 22 is a chemical compound which flows through the refrigerating machinery either as a liquid or a gas. And like all Freon refrigerants, when this liquefied gas changes its form from a liquid to a gas, it must take up heat. And it takes that heat from the foodstuffs and water in your refrigerator, cooling them. But this new Freon refrigerant lowers the temperature by many more degrees, makes it much colder than any other practical refrigerant so far. So after the war, using smaller and less costly compressors, manufacturers will be able to offer you an entirely different kind of refrigerator. 
For instance, a day may come when you will have in your kitchen a low-temperature refrigerating cabinet divided into two insulated sections. One section will be a compartment in which you will be able to quick freeze at low temperature, even as low as 40 degrees below zero, fresh vegetables, fruits, and meats. Merely by turning a dial, like a radio dial, to a point marked green beans or strawberries. The other section may be a storage compartment in which you will be able to keep a year's supply of quick frozen foods at, say, 10 below. This new refrigerant that holds such interesting possibilities for your future, Freon 22, is a fine example of DuPont, better things for better living through chemistry. And now here is Joey Brown, co-star of tonight's <laughs> DuPont Cavalcade. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's cavalcade has brought home to you just one story of the hundreds of grand people, comparatively unknown, who are bringing your boys, sweethearts and husbands, and the armed forces a touch of home sweet home. I know, for I've seen them all over the world. These little-known people of show business who are the hand clasp between you at home and the men and women overseas. I wish I had time to tell you of the many individual experiences and sacrifices of the entertainers that I've met personally. Wonderfully brave, hard-working boys and girls such as Bobby Gilbert, Edith Delaney, Johnny Marvin, Harry Barris, Norma Squires, and oh, so many others. America owes them all a debt of gratitude which can never be fully repaid. Miss Southern and I, all of us here on Cavalcade tonight, pay our tribute to these deliverers of good cheer and laughter. And you can share it, too, because USO camp shows supply entertainment to our fighting men are financed by the contributions you make to the National War Fund. Thank you. Next week, DuPont presents Pat O'Brien in So Sorry, No Mercy, the story of the American foreign correspondent Royal Arch Gunnison, who foresaw the war with Japan and warned the world, who escaped the march of death in the Philippines and later in China, and came back to tell his story. Royal Arch Gunnison will also be on hand with a message of hope for those still under Japanese domination. DuPont invites you to join Cavalcade's audience again next Monday evening when Pat O'Brien will be starred in So Sorry, No Mercy, a stern eyewitness account of the nature of the Japanese enemy, as reported by Royal Arch Gunnison, one of America's distinguished foreign correspondents. Cavalcade is pleased to remind its listeners that Ann Southern appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Broadway Rhythm, and Joey Brown appeared through courtesy of 20th Century Fox Film Corporation, and may soon be seen in Pin-Up Girl. Tonight's Cavalcade score was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. This is James Bannon sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.